What is going on, guys? Welcome back to the Mars Boys Podcast. We are here with episode 99. I'm Brian. I'm Ryan. And we are joined today by Mike, the Garden State Outdoorsman. Hello, guys. Uh, thank you for, for having me on. Yeah, yeah absolutely. So, I see you started a podcast through Boondocks Hunting. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah. So, um, we are um, originally Boondocks Hunting. Um, so, our... We go by Boondocks Hunting, everything like that. Um, and 2020, during COVID, we started our our podcast. Um, and it has taken off ever since. And we called it uh, the Garden State Outdoorsman Podcast. Um, focus really on, you know, New Jersey and everything that New Jersey has to offer. Um, we do, of course, interview a lot of people outside of New Jersey, things mm-hmm. like that as well. Um, so we honestly going to be coming out with another show actually. So we are, we are, um, whether it will be this year or not, we are going to be coming out with a second show. Um, so we can focus only the garden state outdoorsman being about the garden state outdoorsman, uh, Mm -hmm. what it originally was created for. And the new show will focus on everything else. Oh, that's awesome to hear. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, so uh, that that's the plan, you know, with everything that we're doing with YouTube, with um, you know, hunting, the shows, the events that we that we host, and everything like that. It has made it very difficult to do all that at one time. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, and we're also in talks with adding um another show as well because we the the main part we want is Boondocks Hunting to be a network of podcasts, not just one. Um, so we are going to be growing a network of podcasts. So hopefully we'll have a couple other podcasts to in, in the, the network and everything like that as well. Oh, yeah. absolutely. We, we kind of wanted to do the same thing further down the line with Marsh boys. It's just a matter of getting there. Yeah. But it's cool oh, to see yeah. you guys feel like you got there and you can start branching out. Mm-hmm. It's awesome. Yeah. Um, so, you know, like I said, we've been doing this since, uh, 2020. So we're actually closing in on. 200 episodes um, oh, nice. So, nice. yeah 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 so we're closing on 200 episodes um we'll probably be during the season we mass record um our interviews so right now i got between 10 to 15 episodes that we still need to edit mm-hmm. very and nice then yeah and then when hunting season comes about we do a weekly update um so we drop a on like tuesday we will drop our weekly update of everything that's been going on for the week. Quick, mm-hmm. 45 minutes, an hour, nothing, nothing really more than that. And then on the Friday or Saturday, we will drop one of our pre-recorded epi- interview episodes with that will be with some hunter, which will usually be a, uh, roughly about an hour 30 to two to two hours. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, and so we're, we're rolling a lot, a lot yeah. of podcasts <laughs> yeah. out, a I lot can- of content out. Which is good. More content means more views, more downloads. Yeah, mm-hmm. I, the whole stick. I can only imagine it, it, the workload. <laughs> yeah, it's 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 a lot between the cover arts, the clips, the you know just editing the interviews and editing and everything like that. But mm-hmm. I've gotten it down to like honestly, it doesn't doesn't take me that long. Like people always ask like how long does it take? I was like, I if I really want to, I could probably blow through a bunch of episodes in just one day. Um, you mm-hmm. know when we record usually right after the season once we get back into our interview sessions i mean we can have four episodes in one day yeah uh, yeah I, and it's it's easy yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i've been editing the podcast since i think episode two and well since we started with the new software i mean it has been a breeze like i could i could do it like we record we try to record monday nights and yeah. i'll be done and have the podcast pre-uploaded you know by eight o'clock mm-hmm. yeah it's um that that's that's the easy part um you know when i first started i'm getting the the hardest part's the beginning oh yeah you know it's it's first of all coming up with the idea it's the whole talking um carrying a conversation especially if you have um somebody who's a little hesitant or you just don't mesh well with one of your guests that has always been the like in the beginning that was difficult now it's like, all right, I know how to like pull answers out of yeah, out of yep. people, um, but that that was definitely the the most difficulty. And then all the techno technology mm-hmm. and the tech issues that you that you deal with, um, 
in the beginning, that's a huge pain in the butt that they don't really tell you about. <laughs> the The first hurdle we had was we tried recording it off of four different laptops and four different USB mics, and that was the biggest headache that ever existed. It was terrible. Yeah, that was a hard one to do. Yeah, I could I could imagine right there <laughs> that that would be a pain in the butt. Yeah, now we got the podcast or the pod track from Zoom and all the mics set up, and mm-hmm. I, I just have to upload the audio file and mm-hmm. and it's good to go. Yeah, it's yeah, so, perfect. So much nicer now. So <laughs> yeah, definitely. What made you start out? Was it the usual COVID story, or was this something you were thinking about even before that? So we were thinking about like. We were thinking about this um, before, but COVID really like I work in the the mental health and healthcare field. So like Mm -hmm. I wasn't sitting at home just doing nothing. But, um, you know, I had I still had to go work full time job. Yeah. But I was like, you know what? Everyone else is at home. So like and New Jersey, I don't want to say this as like I we're really the first New Jersey hunting podcast. Um, you know, and there there could be easily one out out there or or two that I just don't know about. But for yeah. the most part, like I I could say this actually with like a lot of pride, like a lot of shows came after us, and yeah. I kind of like being the like a I like trying to do stuff original. Like when you look at content to post, it's like what is something different that I can yeah, do that absolutely. everyone else is doing. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, we're, we're constantly trying to do that, but that's what it was like. It was like, what is going to set, you know, boondocks hunting aside from everybody else? Well, let's take a look. Podcasts were starting to kick off, you know, but they still weren't where they are today. Yeah. Um, and I was like, Hey, you know, what? I, I don't see any New Jersey based hunting um podcasts or fishing podcasts or outdoors podcasts like like what we do like why not let's Mm -hmm. let's do this and then one thing led to another we made it official with you know paperwork all the documentations and everything like that um and yeah we were we were created and we created a trailer episode it was awkward um i (laughs) I would definitely say that it and that as honestly one of our I still think like that was in is still in the top five most downloaded like episodes, and I don't even count that as an episode. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I have to say the first episode we ever did was when it was originally four of us. Yeah. We sat down. I think we talked for over two hours, mm-hmm. and that's when I learned that my the original uploading software we use only allowed you to do an hour and twenty minutes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I like I said, I think it's the complete opposite with us. It was the the easiest podcast we ever did was the first time we was the first episode we ever all sat mm-hmm. down and talked about. But <laughs> it's crazy how these things kind of developed in a bubble, like down our way. I mean, obviously, you know, this being in New Jersey, like, yes, there's pockets of cities and stuff like that. But down our way, we do a lot of the hunting and fishing and all that kind of stuff. And we were thinking the same thing, like nobody even knows that this is here. That's why we kind of started. Yep. I'm sure it's probably a similar situation with you up there. Yeah. I mean, um, it, it's New Jersey has so much to offer. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And, you know, we, we've been talking about there's so many sleeper states, you know, and I have to say without a doubt, like New Jersey is one of those sleeper states and it's still not even used, brought up as a sleeper state. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, which I, I don't mind the fact because you know what, more, more for us, you know, yeah. and more for the locals. Um, but like you look at from deer hunting, you, it starts second week of September, goes all the way in February. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we can bear hunt. We have, you know, one of the most densely po- uh, bear populated states in New Jersey. I mean, in the country, mm-hmm. and I mean, psh, our, one of our team guys shot a 350 pound black bear yeah, that's last a nice year bear. with a 19. I think it was a 19 inch skull, which is a which is a Pope and Young, and just missed I think Boone and Crockett by like really half or yeah. yeah. Mm. Um, we didn't actually officially put it in, but like yeah. that is like the the least like that is the the requirements and everything like that. Um, you know, we've shot some big deer, you know, you can shoot unlimited deer, you can yeah. shoot five, you know, you, we can shoot, I think now seven bucks in New Jersey. Then you talk about the waterfowl, you mm-hmm. know, you have waterfowl hunting, you have coyotes, fox, um, you know, it, it is, we just have such a big range. And then you talk about the fishing from freshwater to saltwater, you know, the ocean's not too far, you know, mm-hmm. it is, we have different, you know, 
climates basically gotta like south jersey is so different from you know north jersey it's yeah. like complete night and day oh, difference yeah. from mm -hmm. from everything from yep. the weather to, to every it doesn't you know down mount, here you, we're we're f we're flat farmland with marshes up north you guys are hilly uh or mountainous yeah. woods yeah. or woods yeah. with bogs you know yeah it's, yeah. It, it's wild that the difference and it, it's like and that's what we we like to talk about like you're you're one of the first people we've had from the northern part of Jersey. Yeah. And so it's it's going to be really cool to get your perspective on deer hunting and the different ways you do it when we get into that conversation. But yeah, it, it's it's wild the differences between north and south Jersey. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it's I I love it. And and that's what makes like, you know, our state just so unique. Yep. Like you know, if if I want to go hunt ags, I like this will be my first full year just hunting like big ag fields mm -hmm. and you know i went had to go a little more south for that and just the deer just are the genetics down there is just incredible and i'm not knocking what we have in north jersey because we do oh, have some slammers and, there. and yeah. you know what i mean but i think just you know the turkey population down there is just insane too as well you go more south the better the, the turkey population gets just everything is kind of like it's it's just different you know it's yeah and you have to prepare your for your hunts and your your hunting style is going to vary you know mm -hmm. it's nice being in that where you know you're going down and you're hunting more midwest type of hunting style versus you know when we're in north jersey you're, you're looking at like the northeast of of the country and everything like that you know just more, a little more difficult a lot more mountains yeah you know deer where, scarcely spread and yeah like you you can a deer could pass you up five to ten yards and you might not even yeah. see it because mm -hmm. it's so thick versus if you're in a big ag field i mean you're gonna see 40 50 deer yeah. in a yeah. city, but you may not be in boat you know you might not be in bow range that's the hardest part about that is, is mm -hmm. deer hunting a lot of ag fields i mean yeah you have an idea where them deer are going to come out at yeah. but they could any given night they could pop up 500 yards from your stand where you just saw them 20 yards the night before yeah yeah it, it's Definitely. pretty wild on that front so before we get in anything like any deeper conversation about that Let's hear about how you started in hunting in general. Is it something your family did? Is it something a buddy taught you? Or is it just something you picked up on your own? So um, my family, my, my mom's side of the family, they, we, everyone hunts, you know, we grew up fishing, camping, you know, hunting and stuff like that. But I'm actually an ex hockey player. Okay. So I didn't get the chance to hunt like everyone else kind of did on, on my mom's side of the family. Cause I, instead of traveling to hunt, I was traveling all over the, the country and to mm. Canada to, to play hockey. I played hockey at a extremely high level. Um, I got friends in the NHL, you know, just big time. High. Like I will just full dedication to hockey at a okay. very high yeah. level um, where that was my life. Um, so that's how it really started. But I, you know, always in the summer camping, fishing, wanting to always, you know, take that next step to hunting but i got to watch on the sidelines and just learn everything without actually doing the hunting i knew how to do everything knew how to track all, all these different things and i got injured um i was living up in boston playing up hockey in boston and you know got injuries and just other personal stuff so i decided to retire and i was sitting in bed and I was like, well, what the hell do I do now? Like your whole entire life was dedicated to this one sport. I mean, from going to, to colleges to hopefully playing in the NHL and everything like that. This is the only thing that you've cared about. Like nothing else mattered. Like yeah. mm -hmm. hockey, it went hockey family, then school, you know, mm -hmm. yep. and that's, that's how it was. Um, and I was like, you know what? Like, let's just start, let's just start hunting. And I'm actually the first one in my family to bow hunt. Cause oh, you know, really? being, being a new, yeah, they all, they're all up in Maine and everything like that. So it's all, it's all gun hunting, God. you know? So being down here, Jersey's a bow hunting state with a, without a doubt. Um, you know, so I had no choice, picked up the bow. So I taught everything for bow hunting was self-taught the, the hunting aspect that was all picked up from family and everything yeah. like that. Mm -hmm. But bow hunting was, that is a self-taught, um, self-taught thing. Mm hmm yeah, that's cool. I, I, it's funny. I, I shotgun hunted from the time I got my hunt license up when I was 10 till I was 21. When I turned 22, I went and got my bow license. Two days later, I shot my very first deer. 
<laughs> Three days later, I shot my second deer. And that same season, I shot my first, well, my first buck. But yeah, it, look, it, look at how much time we have to, to bow hunt oh, in oh. New Jersey. Like, it's when people, and yeah, you know what? I still think there's a lot more people that will, that gun hunt in, in New Jersey. But I call it a bow hunting state because, first of all, all the die, and no disrespect to anybody out there, but all the diehard hunters are mostly bow hunting, right? Uh, the, gonna... cra- the crazy, the crazy nuts who are, you know, rucking it miles in and, and everything like that like it's it's just that time of the year you're gonna you know? upset the and orange army yeah 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 you know what and everyone knows how much i hate the orange army and i <laughs> i am a power I'll, I'll be a part of it up until like i don't gun hunt most of my hunting 98 percent of my hunting is done with a bow mm-hmm. yeah no but it's a it's a nice break to go do six day it's like all right like it's more like i'm relaxing and kind of like on a vacation yeah i'm doing the 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 type of hunting that that i'm doing but man we can hunt like i said from september to february you remember the first time you told somebody from pa about our our deer laws yeah they're just (laughs) baffled everyone i tell outside of new jersey they're like how many bucks you can shoot huh what the hell like we we actually have a we haven't made it public yet um, just because, you know, I don't know where the laws are going with New Jersey about, you know, um, hunting competitions and everything like that. I know still right now it's still allowed, but. Um, no. Oh, they banned it? Yeah. Yeah. Earlier this year, it got pushed oh. through. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. I'm not going to well, it's, it's only it's It's only for. Oh, it, there's stipulations to it. I know there's still I I know there's still deer pop or deer competi- like big buck competitions. Yeah. I believe that's still allowed, but definitely look into the, I mean we we talked about it on a previous episode. We yeah. were going to do a, a squirrel yeah. competition, just like a little squirrel so competition and they were yeah. we couldn't do it anymore. Yeah, so usually we're we're almost in a squirrel one last year, so that's going to be a real big bummer that we yep. can't do it this year, but mm-hmm. um so basically whatever i really don't care um you know <laughs> we're doing a all archery hunting competition and it's guys around like not only our state but all other states and the law the the rules are it's bow hunting only you know every animal ha- will have its own point system and then bonus points right whatever you harvest you have to put a confirmation in the group and you'll get your points you know but you can hunt any state Mm-hmm. And as as many states, but when I told people like, yeah, like you know, we have a limited deer and like, you know, we have <laughs> seven bucks, like, no, we're not going to shoot seven bucks, but we have the opportunity to yeah. shoot seven yeah. bucks. So like, you know, and then still traveling and stuff like that and going hunting other states. So everyone was like, what do you mean? You guys, oh, well, we need to come to New Jersey. Like we need to come <laughs> to New, New Jersey. They're like, oh, we're coming to New Jersey. Like that changes like a lot of people's, um aspects i was on the white tail advantage podcast the other day and i was like yeah this is what we can do and then i showed him like the size of the deer that we have and he was like yeah i think i'm definitely <laughs> gonna have to take <laughs> up to new jersey and you know it's it's so great but i just still don't know how new jersey's so like not on the map for for any of these things the more we talk about because of the jersey shore yeah <laughs> yeah yeah no that that's what it is it, it definitely does kill us we pump our fists not our gas <laughs> <laughs> but now did you I, so i'm a big proponent of doing the year-end surveys or the preseason yeah. surveys yeah. i'm not sure if you've done them um they're even talking yes. about adding another buck to the list yes yeah, so. you're allowed to shoot two during six day firearm i believe this is what it is you can you can then you can shoot two during six day firearm and then purchase the third buck tag and shoot three with a shotgun. I, I'm I, I'm pretty sure that's how I interpreted it. I know they're looking to do that or something so on that. They're looking to get away get away with something and just do seven bucks, right? Because I think if you shoot two with your six day, you lose your shotgun yep. one right now. Yep. You you, right? you, so you I, void out your January buck. Yeah. So I think that's where I guess they they wouldn't do that anymore. I, I'm not 100 percent sure. The rules are always confusing to me. Yeah. <laughs> um, I do the surveys. I'm a huge um, antler restriction person because I already hunt in an antler restriction and I can see the the difference. It's a night and day difference. Yeah. Uh, between my zones that are, that are and aren't. Um, and I would say the also the doe numbers are just completely different. Like I, 
it's frustrating being an antler restricted zone and you're going for does, you know, cause there's, I think people just tend to shoot way more does when they can't just shoot whatever bucks walk, yeah. walk by, by, right. Um, and then of course the more mature of a, a buck it is, the harder it's going to get. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm a big like believer in that. I think they're, they're looking, they're probably going to get away, get away with that. Um, whatever they said that, it doesn't really make a difference. I do whatever. Um, and, um, one thing I definitely agreed with is I think they're going to be making the coyote season start in August 1st. And I'm a huge coyote hunter. Um, yeah, I, love I would coyote love to hunting. see that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I think it needs to be all year if you really ask my opinion, but that's a start and that's mm-hmm. a, that's a, that's a much better start. Um, cause is it Pennsylvania the, all year? Pennsylvania is all, all year. Maine's all year. Like, there's a bunch of states that are all year, um, and it gives us something to do in the summer when the does are really at their most vulnerable. Yeah, mm-hmm. fawns you know, and then, or yeah. the fawns are really, you know, we yeah. can't we and even turkeys too. You know, yep. you're, you're turkey you're talking about turkeys too. So like, why, why not? You know, yeah. um, make it a special. Per- I get it. You just don't want anyone doing it. Make it a special permit. Listen, and you know, whatever. Maybe it doesn't have to be for the whole year. A part of the summer mm-hmm. you know the the earlier part of the summer what, whatever just do something you yeah, know yeah, I, yeah don't just let it keep it, getting out definitely. of control like it is yeah, yeah i and and so with the antler restriction deal like where we're at the zones we hunt we hunt in, in an antler restriction zone and then we hunt in a non-restriction zone and down here with the deer numbers we really don't see a difference between zones i have i would say the same amount of bucks and the same amount really? of quality bucks in my non-restricted zone that I do as on camera in my restricted zone. It's just the population down here, and it's not just pocketed. It's all over from, like, I would say, I don't want to be too, too specific, but the Hunterton region down, or, or Lambertville mm-hmm. south, I think is very, very overpopulated with deer. And, you know, excluding the pine barrens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's, you got all them little scrub bucks and stuff like that. Yeah, but yeah. I mean, I don't think there's a lack of quality mature deer around us. Um, you do it does it does kind of suck every year to see like three pointers and spikes and four pointers get shot. But you know, who I mean, who am I, I? I don't know. It's it's like who am I to judge that? You know, um, I get it as somebody that wants to see large mature deer you know i really do i just think the population down here is basically exploded in the last five years and and i i understand that because and that's why i think they really need to take a look at it It can't just be the whole you have to look at each county area hunting zone like absolutely because sometimes they do make decisions like listen yes i know there's still a good amount of deer at one of my spots that i hunt but I used to be able to walk out into that field and come across 20 to 30 deer, right? Mm-hmm. Now I'll be lucky to see one. Really? Like if I see one, that's like, oh my God, like that's, I can't believe it, you know? Um, And then the, and that's the antler restricted zone, you know, where the big bucks are kind of just staying, you know, in deep in the woods and everything like that. When that's what, that used to be all does and, and small bucks out there. And then, the antler restriction like yeah i'll get it i'll get a nice buck but none of my like my a shooter at that spot is wouldn't be a shooter at you know one of my other spots because of just and that's how i break it down some people tell me i shouldn't break it down like that but i like to break things down on what the deer number look like what the quality deer look like yeah, absolutely no that's that's how i do it um you know one spot has different genetics and different amounts so guess what if it's a decent sized buck, I'm probably going to pass them, you know, in, in one spot and shoot them in another, because yeah, you know, that might 100%. be, the, that might be the biggest buck in that area and the most dominant or most mature buck yep. in that area. So, you know what, that's kind of what I'm, what I'm after. Um, so it just all depends for me. And, you know, for me, I see a difference, but I mean, I can also, see where where it doesn't where you had that type of number where it's like yeah mm-hmm. yeah it's it's not going to make a difference you have to do it the way that we're doing it now mm-hmm. yeah and just like you had said before just like you had just said you know i'm assuming 
a 140 inch deer up your area is going to compare to a 120 inch deer in the pine barrens you're yeah. getting the same quality of deer it's just genetics and everything like that that 120 inch deer in the pine barrens is probably one of the bigger deer around <laughs> exactly exactly yeah. you know and and that's how you kind of have to look at it like you can't have like we're going out of state we're going to be doing a few out of state hunts and listen if i if i see a deer that i think is worthy it could be the biggest spike in the world if it's legal <laughs> yeah. it's an out of state hunt i'm a brand new hunter like yep. you know my my expectations for for this area is not what it would be for absolutely back at, back mm -hmm. at home yeah. you know what i mean it, this is an out of state i traveled all the way out yeah. here i paid Best a lot believe. of money <laughs> <laughs> right <laughs> so you know it, it just all depends so <clears throat> you said you're going out of state for yep. these hunts what is your favorite state other than New Jersey, and why would it be your favorite state other than New Jersey to go on these hunts? Maine. I haven't been to many places yet, and I'm really starting like this year. Mm -hmm. I've been, I've hunted Maine, I've hunted upstate New York, um, and I want to say PA. I believe PA. Can't remember. Mm -hmm. um, but I mean, I grew up in my in the summers up in Maine. Um, so it's big woods. It's it's you get lost with with just like within a second yeah. you know it, it's very difficult um and, and i've just always had the you know the dreams of killing a big big buck there and i just i'm used to it it's cold mm -hmm. it's how you very it's it's how you envision hunting yeah. you know i haven't had the chance yet to go to alaska but where we where we hunt and where we have our lake house and everything like that it's as close as right now that i can get to to alaska it's remote yeah. as hell i mean no cell service no no nothing like i can walk into canada if i really wanted to because it's on a dirt road and there's no signs or no nothing like that it's yeah. just woods you wouldn't you wouldn't even know that you're in canada you know <laughs> so that's why that's why it's my favorite place um and i think it will probably always be my favorite place now it's not mm -hmm. friendly to, to bow hunting because it's so difficult so yeah. that's a place where i will bring the 30 odd six mm -hmm. um one day i would like to kill a a buck there with with my bow but right now if i'm going up there you know i'm i'm bringing the the good old 30 odd six yeah <laughs> hey no shame in it mm -hmm. no no I, I i mean i love that gun i i absolutely do i'm i am a bow like i said i am a bow hunter but like i do like to take a little bit of time to to shoot uh shoot the guns and try to kill something with a gun and mm -hmm. you know there's no better place than doing it up there because you know what if you see one deer that could be the only <laughs> damn deer yeah. that you're that you're seeing so you got to take advantage of it so do you do a lot of hike out or like pack out hunts up there like where you go out and camp and do that kind of thing or you so just go we, the cabin? we 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 have we have a lake house now so That's we don't we don't nice. have to yeah. <laughs> and plus by the time by the time we go man i'm uh, it's cold it yeah. is cold cold like their rifle season's late wait you know it's not like if it's an early season you know i think it would be way more doable just camping out mm -hmm. and we we would love to do that but usually it's it's around uh thanksgiving time and, and stuff like that so there is no camping out yeah. <laughs> like that um you know it, it, it's a bit too cold for that um so we we stay at the at the cabin and everything like that mm -hmm. um we just put they just put wi-fi in it so you know very that'll nice. be nice i'll be able to do i'll be able to do podcasts and still be able to do what i what i normally would do at home um and just be able to to hunt all day but you know we bring the shotguns with us because there's partridge around and everything like that oh that's cool um, i posted a video um i think last week of my cousin saw links um beautiful links on on our and you know i have some content that i'm going to be pushing from from his his trips out there um, you know, he's, he's gotten charged or buff charged by a black bear with, with a couple of cubs. And I can't wait to get him on the, the podcast to tell, tell that's those stories and everything like that. But he's killed a giant 10 pointer and a nice, uh, I think eight pointer or six pointer last year. So he's, nice. he's on a hot streak yeah. right now. You know? <laughs> um, and we're still getting eluded of that moose tag. We're, we're trying, yeah. it's going to be difficult. Mm -hmm. I've had one family member kill a bull moose. Um, and we've been, you know, we've had family up there and living up there for at least 50 years. I was going to say drawing the tags, just half the battle, ain't it? Yeah. Yes. Yes. That's, that's the, that's probably the, the hardest part of it, <laughs> if, you know, and then it's, it's, it's crazy to say, but then 
hunting is the uh, is probably second on that list. Mm-hmm. So let's come back to Jersey real quick. Yep. And I this is something I ask all, uh, most deer hunters that we talk to. Yep. Jersey is one of the few states that you can bait during season and hunt over a bait pile. <clears throat> Me, personally, as a lazy deer hunter, I always call myself, I don't see a big problem with it. What are your thoughts on baiting? First of all, whatever is legal is legal. Mm-hmm. And all there, look at people like, oh, you know, you wouldn't really do that. Well, look at what the Native Americans did. Yeah. They no, drove, they drove uh, buffalo we, off, yeah, the off the edge of a cliff. We yeah. just talked about this last <laughs> podcast. <laughs> so... Yeah, so how the hell are you going to tell me that putting corn out there, right, mm-hmm. and baiting deer is not not hunting? Sorry, but neither neither is driving buffalo off a cliff, right, <laughs> if, you, if you really want to think about yeah. it, right? So whatever whatever is legal for your state, I'm okay with, and I, I'll do it. Um, I don't – I will shoot a lot more does, Um over bait and stuff like that okay i use it a lot more in the in the early season like so right now to the early season once we start to shift to that you know that rut phase yep mm-hmm. then i don't really i won't hunt over bait but i will still bait for the does because okay. i want the does around mm-hmm. um you know so everything's very situational yeah very situational during the rut last year i didn't really I don't, I think maybe one time I hunted over bait, you yeah, know, okay. once or twice. Um, and that's, that's really about it for the most part. It was just moving and grooving all over the place, you know, just finding sign and, and hunting in spots where I think deer are going to be. Um, and yeah, I mean, I, I have nothing wrong with that. Some of my best fr- friends, they freaking <laughs> shoot over bait and they <laughs> kill giant deer. So, <laughs> you know, I've, I've done it. They've done it. You know, it's just something I try to use less and less, especially now going to yeah. certain states Fair where enough. you can't bait. Mm-hmm. So I don't want to rely only on baiting because I do, you know, I, I'm going to be hunting other states and everything like that. But in New Jersey, if, or if I go wherever and it's legal, <laughs> listen, yet again, I don't care. I have more problems with crossbows than I have with, with baiting. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> let's talk about that then before we get into what else I was going to talk okay. about. What, what is your, I, so before I like full time got into hunting, um, I, like I said, I'd been hunting since I was 10 and, you know, we ran yep. coon dogs and stuff, but I, I rode bulls from the times I was 13. So I was 21 and I now have very bad shoulder issues. So drawing a compound bow back is not easy for me. Yeah. Um, I switched to a crossbow three years ago mm-hmm. and i love it so what what what's what's your stick with crossbows like, like so i'm good like i have one i had a shoulder injury right mm-hmm. i used it for one year um you know i'm good like i do believe if you're under a certain age minus like a medical or a physical problem you should try to get into compound bows, right? Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh, I you st- know, I still shoot a compound yeah, bow when I right. can too. So I shot um, one last um, year. See that I don't, and I want to rephrase. I have, I just don't <laughs> want people to rely so much on the crossbows. I Fair want, enough. you know, once you've achieved that, if you're a brand new hunter and you get into with the crossbow, good, get into hunting. Yeah. But mm-hmm. now try to take that next step. Like me, uh, eventually there's gonna, I'm gonna try to get in the, you know. The traditional style at some point like that's that's going to be the next more step. kudos to you yeah. <laughs> right um you know i i just want to see especially if you're younger and fit you know everything like that hey give it a shot yeah mm-hmm. you know challenge yourself you know d- do it like that um you know i if you have a medical is- issue something like that or you know once you hit a certain age i think there's certain states that do like you have to get a doctor yes. and i yep. think I think Jersey actually you it's, needed a doctor. It know that started at, at out as just a handicap yeah. crossbow state. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Mm-hmm. That was like which, early 2010s, I believe. Which I would be good with. Or what I'd really like to see too is, you know what? Break it up kind of like how New York has it. You know, reward reward some of those guys that are at, like bow hunting, you know, with the, the compound or the, you know, the traditional just because, you know, it's already hard enough, you know, then you're going to compete with a guy who just can, 
you know, with the brand new six hundred dollar, you know, or whatever, how much these just cited his crossbow in for one hundred and twenty yards, <laughs> right? You know, I I kind of just want to be able to get out there and just bow hunt mm-hmm. and not you know run into somebody who's who's running a crossbow just for maybe the first like two weeks of the season. Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah, so that's, we, we that's already definitely have, fair. We already have that early part of the season, right? Make it not only I and I hate earner buck too, but that's yeah, another you know you both. <laughs> You know, so, hey, during that time, make that you can only hunt with a compound or a, you know, traditional. Mm -hmm. You look at the numbers, I think it was like 40 something percent were killed with deer were killed with a crossbow. Mm -hmm. So like just for just for those two weeks, just like, you know, give a head start on the guys that are using the traditional style or the compounds and then roll it in. Hey, you can, you know, crossbows now opens up something like that. Like just, just, just try doing that. Of sorts. Yeah, some, yeah. Something like that. I mean, I we have six, that. we have six months of archery hunting, yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. You could give, you could give the crossbow guys five months, yeah. right? <laughs> you know, it, it, I think it would just be something, you know, cool. And I think it also maybe would get maybe some more people that haven't wanted to move to the, to the compound bow or something like that to move to the compound bow or something like that. Yeah. I will say. Shooting a deer with a crossbow versus a compound, it doesn't even compare. Like I said, yeah. I use it because I almost have to. Yeah. But shoot, there's nothing like shooting a, a, a deer yeah. with a compound bow. And, you know, I'd much rather people be out hunting than not hunting. So if that's what you have to use, then for all means, I'm just, you know, when, when I talk about this, it's like, hey, once you've done it, try to move. Because, yes, there is no better feeling than shooting a deer with a, with a compound bow. So... I kind of want to play devil's advocate here a little bit. <laughs> so, as he likes to. I I don't know if you've listened to the earlier stuff or you, even if those conversations are still up cuz I know we got rid of some of the lower quality earlier episodes we had. But um I just got my first deer last year, my first doe. I've never gotten a buck before and I did my first thing was a crossbow. I want to get into a compound bow. However, I seeing like the red top guys and stuff like that, it gets very intimidating. They're like making their own arrows and all kinds of stuff like that and like all the all the, their own I have no <laughs> idea what even goes into all that and it seems like that's the path everybody travels down once they start getting into that world. So, I will agree with that, but I think it's because you just want to be a master of your craft. Once mm-hmm. you do it all, once you start, like I didn't think I wanted to do my own arrows, and I still haven't gotten a chance. But I've, it's become more of a thing where I want to start doing these arrows. Like I want to start building my own arrows. I just haven't had the time yet. You know, mm-hmm. it, it yeah. you only have so much time. But I'm yep. telling you, once you really start bow hunting, then you're gonna dive in. Like man, you should see our. We just had a full conversation in our group chat just on mechanicals and, and fixed blades. Mm-hmm. You know, and then arrow weight and everything like that. It's it's just like it's another thing that bow hunting just has so many, you know, mm-hmm. little webs that you yeah. can go down. And I think you're you're going to enjoy it. Mm-hmm. And you gotta remember in the beginning, you don't you don't have to do all that. Like when you're ready, you you will. You, yeah. you know, you will, but in the beginning you're you're not gonna want it. You're you're not gonna wanna just listen. If you when you get it, get it practice have fun with it and that's the most important part have fun and when you're ready to dive into the the crazy aspect of it <laughs> you know then you'll then you'll dive in but that crazy aspect it's fun that's like i'm a nerd when it comes mm. to comes to that type of stuff now i one of the biggest reasons i have an interest in in getting into like the more traditional bows and stuff like that is my dad doesn't hunt anymore and he actually has one of the old traditional style uh, bows and that thing is like really long i don't even know how you you hunt with something like that and i know like the draw weights go are crazy on them sometimes yeah, yeah. like it, it it's interesting but how do how do you not let something like that hamper you when you're out in the woods like it's it's more to do it's more movement and stuff like that how do you get but that's around the, all that's that? a, that's a challenge yeah mm-hmm. that's what makes bow hunting like I don't want it to be easy. Mm-hmm. I don't. As And sometimes I'll complain. <laughs> but at the end of the day, that's what makes hunting hunting. And, you know, that's why I like – that's why I just like hunting mature bucks because mm-hmm. it's – if I, I – we have a saying on our podcast, you have to do 10 things right, you know, to, to kill that, that deer. Last year, we most of us only did nine things right. 
Yeah. Right. We we met we we were right on that <laughs> these mature bucks. Right. We just couldn't complete that next step that that we needed to. Mm-hmm. And it's frustrating. It's angry, <laughs> and you know things are blown, and you're gonna get you're going to screw up hunts. Mm-hmm. You're gonna get ca- get caught drawing back. You're going to. It's a different adrenaline run. Mm-hmm. You know, I killed. Um, I think like two years two years ago, I killed my first black bear with the, with the shotgun. Mm-hmm. Oh, that and must did, be an experience. It didn't do it for me. Really? You know, I so let me let me explain. I've already bow hunted them. So oh, okay. When when you could bow hunt them in New Jersey, I bow hunted them the first year. The craziest adrenaline rush in my life. I mean. Being face to face, literally face to face with a few black bears and ten yards away from some <laughs> big boars, like it, it's just unreal. Fast forward, they they banned it. Every you know, everyone in New Jersey, they know that they they banned mm-hmm. it. And yeah. when they opened it back up, we were so excited, and it was a bummer. It wasn't going to be archery that you know the first year, and then it got banned again for like a week, and then it came back. Right, it just it took some of the um adrenaline out of it you mm-hmm. know because i didn't have it didn't have to be a close shot you know it, it and it it just i don't know it, it was just different now i bow hunted them last year i'll be starting my bear season um september 7th in upstate new york and then eventually rolling into to new jersey i'm a diehard bear hunter now mm-hmm. you know i love bear hunting um i love eating it it's amazing eat like food this is you know one of my hides right here mm-hmm. you know i i i love it um it is one of the craziest things but i gotta do with the bow like i new york when you open up you'll be able to do it either shotgun rifle or bow and all the guys are like what are you gonna do i'm like i'm bringing my bow i i promise that the next bear is going to be with a bow and that's that's gonna once happen it was great and don't get me wrong i i loved (laughs) it and i was very thankful but it's it's not the same as with a a bow yeah so you still get that fever after all this time yeah so oh, man <laughs> do you still shake like a leaf because that's the first thing i noticed I, I told brian when i came out of the the stand for the first time i was like i don't know what's wrong with me like i'm shaking like i feel flush all kinds of stuff like that you still get that to this day yeah i think um i with big bucks yeah like not even not even close with does I still do, but I can keep it under control a lot more with, with a doe. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I just go through the breed. Sometimes with bucks, it just, yep, it, yeah. fl- it flies out the head. You know, um, you know, when I killed moose, um, he, my heart rate went to 164. I think. <laughs> you know, I will, you know, and I thought I was going to throw up everywhere. Like I got <laughs> back and like my stomach just hurt. And like I was, I was like, I was still never forget like how badly I, I thought I was gonna fall out the stand. Yeah, that's how bad I was shaking. But you know, that's I've I've won championship games. I've I've played yet again hockey at some of the highest levels and some of the biggest. I've played in front of 40, 40 000 people in Canada. Mm-hmm. It does not compare to having a bear or a deer encounter like that. Mm-hmm. Like it does, the adrenaline rush does not. It, it doesn't compare. Mm-hmm. So this this is kind of off topic, but since you brought it up, you, you played D1 for college? So I played I played juniors. Um, I was hopefully going to go um, D1 or, or, or play in the, you know, a, a higher level. I played um, – so in hockey, you don't have to go D1 to, to go to the NHL or mm-hmm. to, to bet, better yourself. There's so many leagues and there's – so many competitive leagues and junior leagues and stuff like that. Um, so um, I played up in Boston um, in, for juniors and stuff like that. And then, you know, I could have gone to, I think I got an invite to, to go to Sweden at one point um, and stuff like that. But, you know, I got, got injured and that just, you know, the passion wasn't there anymore yeah. and it became for, for hunting. And I'm actually like very thankful, like, you know, because I just love what I do now. Yeah. Yes, mm-hmm. if I would have made it to the NHL, it would have been great because I would have had the money to go to Alaska <laughs> and like to do these things. But you know, I, I just wouldn't have the time to dive into hunting like I have done in the last like 15, 15 years, mm-hmm. and I'm like twelve years. Um, so <clears throat> it's just you know, it's just one of those one of those things. And yeah, yeah, I didn't mean to get off topic. I was just no, curious, no, no worries cause... at all. 
so the the school I went to, uh, Ferris was D one. I wasn't sure if I actually saw like saw you before or not or something. Like yeah, that. yeah, 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 curious. yeah. So to jump back on the deer hunting, what does your early season grind look like? What are you doing now until the second week of September? Well, man, usually most years now that I'm 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 engaged and I I got a fiance and everything like that, things have definitely changed because she allows me to kind of do whatever I want with hunting during the season Mm -hmm. so i don't have we we came to agreement kind of when we first started dating like listen this is what i do this is how so my summers my off time is more things done with her now than Mm -hmm. ever before so i i kind of gotta take the the time that i have um you know i i just make the most of it you know and running a lot of trail cameras at this point not really in the woods most of my prep's already done you know, a lot of e-scouting um, and, and things like that. Um, all my old spots that, I, that I've been hunting for years, there's really no work being done there at this okay. point. Like, I, I know what needs to be done. Minerals will be dropped and, and, and just um, going to be start changing the SD cameras that I have to um, my Moultrie cameras. Um, mm-hmm. You're a big wireless that, camera guy? Yeah, yeah. So I'm on the field staff team with with Moultrie, but oh, I've been a nice. I've been I've been a uh, a wireless guy since I got a um, I got a spy point. I went some from spy point to reveal and now like to to Moultrie. Okay. Um, and they've by far been been my favorite. Um, obviously, I'm mean, <laughs> now that, that's why I kind of like joined with them is because you know they I I just love their camera and everything like that and and everything that it that it has to offer. Um, but it's just made it where I don't like to be in the woods that much if I don't need to. Yeah, fair enough. And now I don't have to go in and, and check an SD card and everything like that. Mm-hmm. I can let things soak in. Um, so a lot of inventory with um, trail cameras, minerals, glassing. So with the ag fields now that I'm more south now this year too, a lot of glassing. You know, just watching deer, trying to learn this new property as much as I can. Mm-hmm. Um, just from minimal you know, without me going really in too, too much. Yeah. You know, I've, I've set up my cameras, everything like that. And I'm e-scouting it. Mm-hmm. Um, we will be in Delaware September 1st. So we're going down there with, we're going to be going down there with only e-scouting. So we're not, we've never been down there. We just, this just came today that we're like, Hey, this is official. As long as the weather holds up, we are a hundred percent officially going going down there hey we'll be um, we'll be down there september 1st to dove hunt with some buddies <laughs> oh really yeah oh yeah. Uh, yeah i think we'll be in delaware either mm-hmm. delaware or maryland I, I don't know where he plans on hunting yet but yeah oh snap all right well hey maybe <laughs> if, if we're close enough we'll we'll, we'll link up absolutely um, man so yeah that that's the game plan with that and then same thing with you know like i said september 7th is bear season in new york so we went dropped the camera doing minimal stuff it's a brand new land so i don't know much about it Mm -hmm. we got boots on the ground um you know but it's more of a laid back that year this year you know it's i gotta work as much as i can we got a wedding to pay for everything like that and you know trying to buy a house um but a lot of e-scouting and a lot of just letting the ca- doing the work before it gets hectic and letting those cameras sit. And a lot of the adjustments will come in season because things are going to change once the velvet tri- strips off. Yeah. So, you know, once the, you know, the, the time changes and the, you know, we get less sun and, you know, the weather starts to change, everything's going to change. Mm-hmm. So for a new property, I'm going to learn on, on the fly for my old ones. I already know what's going to happen. So I already have the, I know the expectations and everything like that, but I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Mm-hmm. You got any target bucks yet? Huh? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. This, this one new property. I mean, so far there's at least, probably like five or six giants nice. like i wow. mean like big big i like to try last year was the first year that i only i didn't have targets i usually have about five to ten target bucks that i'm after mm-hmm. right um and all big between you know a moose was like 118 120 but anywhere from there and there and up um, you know, um, I'm going to go for a really unique looking, like there was a, there's one year that I had three on one side and then a spike. And I wanted that deer <laughs> so badly. And I still think he's around. I'm, I'm hoping he's there because like, that is a, 
I've had so much history with that deer. Like it's like four years of history, and I I want that deer yeah. bad. He's not gonna score well, but I just like I, I want him. And mm-hmm. once I get hooked on really one deer, that's all I can really think about <laughs> is one deer. So so it's nice having a bunch of deer there because like oh here's this one and I'm gonna shoot this one. Like if you're if they're anywhere on my list or you know they're they're a deer that just shows up like. Listen, I'm I'm taking that shot. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. So, you mentioned it previously. Mm-hmm. Why don't now? I know why I don't like Arna Buck. What is your great with Arna Buck? Well, it cost it's cost me most multiple bucks. Yep. Um, yep. Two, I think when I've I have seen a lot of small deer at the butcher. And when I mean small deer, I'm talking about deer with people. still some spots on it. Mm-hmm. Right? Just people trying to get that doe out of the way. Try. Like I, I think it, I think it causes so many people to just rush, and to and a lot of the fawns that are killed are actually bucks. Yeah, you know they're 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 just you know, and to me, that's not that's not okay. You know, we're mm-hmm. already in a state that. You have a limited amount of deer, so why do we need to earn? You know what I mean? Listen, yep. if I go out and shoot a buck, best believe, okay, I got my buck out of the way. Now I can go drop like three does, four yeah. does. You know, mm-hmm. now you, you know, that's that's kind of like my thinking. Like, you know, you're just putting this pressure on people to or do illegal stuff where you're kind of putting them in a bind where, oh, gi- this giant deer just walked by. You know what? We may have that, like, oh, you know what? We're n- we're not going to shoot that deer. You know, but there's somebody out there that's going to shoot that deer yeah, mm-hmm. and yeah. say that he, he shot a doe. Right. So why, why put people in that, in that predicament already, you know? Yep. And, and yes, it's, it's all on the hunter and I get that, but man, there's some people that just, they, they may never see a deer that size ever again. You know what especially I mean? What, new what if, hunters. Especially new you hunters. Put a it's six, like, you put a 16 year old in the stand and he may have 30 does on camera. Yep. And what if by chance here comes a 150 inch whitetail just strutting his yeah. stuff? Right? That that that's I mean, even a even a 20 year old that's never really hunted before and just got into it and yeah. has watched the YouTube videos, have maybe even read some books, and he went through the hunting class. He knows he's so excited. Even she, he or she is so excited. Here comes that even 130 inch deer too, or to a, you know to a new hunter is like whoa. It's giant. Yeah, it's 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 still a big deer. You know, it's it's a big deer. I, it, I don't know. It, it's it's tough. Yeah. <laughs> to me, a hundred and twenty inch deer is a, a big deer, but I've seen some. One hundred twenty is, and I've seen some big body. And that's what like I really want a bigger body. Like Moose, he was one eighteen, but like the Canada hun- deer. Yeah, he was one hundred and seventy four pounds early season. It was the on <laughs> September nineteenth, one seventy four. Um. So, and that was at the butcher. Yeah, mm-hmm. he was 174. So, I mean, that's a, with his, that's a 200 pound deer, mm-hmm. you know, and yeah. that's kind of like, that's the perfect thing. Like, that's what I really want yeah. as much meat as I can get, yep. you know, and I do, <laughs> I do want, I do want big antlers, but that is such a bonus. Like, if mm-hmm. I can shoot a big bodied mature deer, yeah, and then 100%. he has, then he has big antlers too that go along yeah. it, yeah. that's just, that's just an extra bonus. Yep. <laughs> Well, before I jump to the next topic, you got any other deer hunting questions? Um, I don't think I have any more on deer hunting. I was going to ask him about something else, but so let's see what you say first. We are a waterfowl centric. Yep, that's podcast. where I was going to go. <laughs> we, <laughs> yes. we, I, I, you, we talk about everything. We enjoy talking about everything, but we love the waterfowl hunt. Is that something that you do often, or is that something you've done? This will here be and there? my third. This will be my third year. Mm-hmm. And my obsession has gone more <laughs> and more. And don't get me wrong, it's still it's still not deer hunting for me. Yeah. But it's such a like I look forward to waterfowl. See and waterfowl and like once once the rut's done. Once mm-hmm. the rut's done, <laughs> I kinda like last year I was like, all I could think about was waterfowl hunting. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's awesome. You know, and I, I actually shot my so yeah, last year was my second year. I shot my first my first geese last year. So oh, we, there you we go. Did, we did, That's... Yeah, we did a lot of goose hunting, and oh my god, I loved it. That I, is, I mean, I... <laughs> that is my personal stick. I love goose hunting more than anything in this world. I got an yeah. enclosed trailer out there in the yard with, 
I think there's 12 dozen total decoys in there. My dog, he is pretty much strictly trained on goose hunting. He hasn't gotten a water. He retrieved one duck, and that was shot while we were goose hunting. <laughs> Um, but yeah, that's what I love to do is goose hunting. So it's, it's yeah. good to hear that you got out and enjoyed that. Yeah. I, I, it's become a thing where, you know, now I'm going to start getting the calls and everything like that <laughs> and really start. Cause one of my buddies, Justin, he got me hooked on it. Um, you know, and he's such a big, uh, waterfowl guy and Turkey guy and everything like that. But, you know, we've, I've only had one bad waterfall hunt and that was my first ever one. It was downpouring raining. Like it was miserable. <laughs> And I'll never forget, we, everything was flooded, which was great, you know, but like, it was just miserable Yeah. and the birds weren't flying. So all of a sudden we're like, oh, like, let's go grab our like coffee and everything like that real quick. We just moved for a second. Here a, they bunch of, a bunch of ducks just flew right into the decoys and <laughs> none of us were like, could get our gut. It was no birds. We didn't kill any birds that day. Um, and then that was the last year that was like the only hunt i went on for for that year and then the next year it just like which is my first official year that it's like that was we killed so many ducks we we have a story um we told on the podcast we call it the zombie duck so it was during that arctic blast so we're down um hunting and everything was frozen over except for this little spot which was perfect Mm -hmm. we threw the decoys out i mean birds it was insane. And I, <laughs> I shot my first um, mallard duck that day. There you go. And it was an old one. It was like um, like gray and everything like that. It was a beautiful bird, right? We thought it was dead. <laughs> it, there's no signs of life. We put it down, whatever. More birds come in, boom, boom, boom. And all of a sudden, we hear something behind us. And we turn around. And this duck is just running. And that's, so we're, we're chasing and everything like that. It gets into like the stick stuff. So, you know, we're, we're trying to get it. We, we could see it. Justin got a hand on it, but couldn't get a good enough hand you on know. it. They came loose and we could not find him. Oh. And we, we searched everywhere. Then um, we had it happen again. We shot another bird. And now this time we put the birds in front of us. <laughs> you know, like, hey, we'll see so, this time. <laughs> And this time another one got up. So we're like, we're like, what the hell's going on? Like, you know, these birds are coming back to life and everything like that. And you know, we had to finish off the job and everything like that. And I think we had a um we had a hawk steal one of our our birds uh that hunt too after we we killed it when we had it sitting behind us. I think a bird came down and and took one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, got into the big waterfowl stuff. Um absolutely, you know, insane. I'm actually getting should be getting hopefully in by the end of the year, my um, Drake Mallard that I, I went to go get um, done at the taxidermist. Um, mm-hmm. and we shot that on, on the last day, both me, we we're goose hunting, got our limit out. Then we were like, Hey, you know what? Let's just walk to the pond. See if, you know, there's any, any ducks. It's the last day. And truth behold, they're everywhere. And we walked <laughs> right, we walked right on these mallards and we, we blasted them. And I think Jess and I both shot the same mallard and we rock, paper, scissored for who would get it. And you know, I won. So to the taxidermist, it goes. Yep. <laughs> taxidermist, it goes. So have you, did you do any, uh, snow goose yet? Not yet. That is, that is going to be eventually next on, on the list. Um, when we were in Blairstown, we, we, did have we didn't have the opportunity but i mean the amount of snow geese <laughs> that we saw that would fly by um we no longer have a property in in blair sound and everything like that but if we can get it uh get one again it is definitely like game on is definitely <laughs> on the menu like i i, I want to do it so bad um but i just i just love waterfowl hunting man i i've i've grown into it got my own waiters for it going to be getting my i use my turkey hunting gun right now Mm -hmm. um but i will be getting the the plan is to buy a brand new uh waterfowl gun this year um so yeah we're 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 diving we're really (laughs) diving into it um eventually the decoys will be coming and everything like that so we're excited for some waterfowl hunting this year too like we got another spot that is public and there's just so much ducks and geese and everything like that Mm -hmm. it's insane I want to, I kind of want to talk to you after you get the first, the first time snow geese tornado over you. 
I kind of want to talk to you after that because there's nothing yeah. crazier than seeing that. <laughs> definitely, like I, I, I'm definitely down for that. We had um, one of my buddies. Um, podcast hasn't dropped yet, but um, he was snow goose hunting, and he was like, "Dude, you couldn't hear anything. <laughs> yeah, it's wild. Like, it, yeah. it was so loud, <laughs> like, <laughs> and it's and just you squonking. <laughs> it's it's annoyingly loud." <laughs> He was like, you couldn't hear the peop- the person counting down, so we- I just assumed everyone was just shooting, and so I just started shooting. Everybody was like, like, we going? We going? <laughs> what are we doing here? <laughs> yeah, so it, it's, you know, I, I've I've seen some of the videos for that. I mean, it's mm-hmm. it looks insane, and I've seen it from a, the, the birds from afar and just, like, how many they are. It's, like, so overwhelming that I cannot wait for that. <laughs> so for anybody listening out there, you've now heard it from multiple people don't go buy a snow goose call because they don't hear it they're not gonna hear it <laughs> <laughs> so you got anything else ryan mm, i think that's it for me mike is there anything else you want to touch on shout out how, how can everybody get a hold of you listen to the podcast check out boondock outdoors how do they do that so um yeah no um first of all i want to thank you guys so much for for having me on it it's a definite definite pleasure um I've, I've had a lot of fun i love being a guest um it's, <laughs> you don't have the pressure of coming up with questions yeah. Yeah. Uh, um but yeah you can uh you guys can find us all over instagram youtube everything like that boondocks hunting or you know you can check out the the podcast the garden state outdoorsman podcast um we're going to be coming out with the website soon too as well um but yeah any anything boondocks hunting and you can hit me up from from there um you know, I'm open to talk to to anyone. I'm also open to have anyone on on the podcast, guys. So you know, during, come waterfowl season, you know, <laughs> I've I, I've already had the things turning in my head that we're, we're definitely gonna have to get you on during waterfowl season. Hey, we can um, do that. <laughs> you know, and yeah, anything like that. We do host a bunch of events. So our next event will be a game a a game dinner. And that will be oh. probably like right after the season. Okay. Um, I So I'll let you guys know about that. And, you know, whoever's interested, you know, just keep a, an eye out and everything like that. Um, and in the summers, we usually hold a meet and greet and archery shoot too as well. Um, so right now we do two events and we do go to events as well. But we do – we host our two own. It's tons of fun. Awesome. Um, and, yeah, we, we have merch coming. Actually, I can – when's this podcast dropping? Uh, Tuesday. Okay, cool. So by the time this has dropped, we are actually going to be starting our pre-orders of a breast cancer awareness uh, shirt that we're going to be doing. Um, It's black and pink and the um, proceeds are going to go to, you know, one of the the donations for for breast cancer awareness month. Um, I'm a huge pink guy during um, October, um, probably because of sports and everything like that. Yeah, so I have yep. <laughs> I have black and pink arrows. Like if if I had the money or the sponsorship to do it, I would have a, a bow set aside that would just have black and pink <laughs> um, <laughs> veins. I mean, uh, with strings and everything like that. But mm-hmm. I don't. Hence, uh, Hoyt, if you're listening, uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> Shane was I got plugging. Some, I can't. <laughs> I got can't be I got it. some ideas. <laughs> um, but yeah, so you know. That, that would be great. Um, anyone who wants a shirt and everything like that, just just give us a DM or anything like that with your size and everything like that, and we'll we'll get them pre-ordered and get them printed for you guys. And yeah, I mean, nothing really else there. You know, that that's about it. I I appreciate the hell out of you guys. Yeah. No we problem. Well, look, guys, to everybody on. listening, um, if you can't find his stuff, just look in the bio for, of the podcast. I'll I'll link uh, his Instagram page, the podcast page, and Boondocks page. But you know, same to you. We enjoyed having you on. It's great to banner with somebody that's mm-hmm. still in New Jersey and <laughs> have a great conversation with you. It, it was awesome. Yeah, Def- Def- yeah definitely, definitely. We'll have we'll have you back on. That's for sure. Yeah, I I can't wait till the till the next time. Um, also, one more thing, we do have a um, we do a. I think you you guys were were listening to our, our trivia night. Yep. So we're gonna mm-hmm. have we're gonna have another one August twenty second. But eventually, we we definitely got to get you guys on for for a trivia night as as well and that, that would be definitely fun um yeah for so, sure yeah. yeah all right thank you mike no problem guys thank you so much